the RV pulled into the previously unknown town of Mildew, which had apparently now become a central Texas replacement for one of the Dallas suburbs that no longer existed. Mildew proudly advertised a population of 8,738, and from what they had seen so far, a fast calculation suggested that it must have nearly one church for every 10 residents. After Tom drove the RV down the road into the town, and it appeared that they were about to emerge on the opposite side of the town, Charla suggested that they might want to stop at a park that the vehicle was passing and get out to stretch their legs. Tom agreed, and a moment later, the party was offloaded from the RV and felt grass under their feet for the first time in a while. Bailey ran out into the field and found a stick to throw up into the air with a flip of his neck. Tom was quite sure that he was missing his once cherished finger, which he used to flip into the air in exactly the same way. As women often do, the advent of Charla on the field of doggy romance had put an end to Bailey's wonderfully fun game of throw the finger and catch it. Both items would have exuded an exciting musky odor. Although to be fair, the Charla parts were not ripe due to putrefaction like the finger was. Maybe Bailey chose the right scent after all. It was about 4 p.m. when they started lollygagging about the park. And by the time the dog was beginning to get tired of frisking about in the grass, and the human contingent was over the first buzz and started into that secondary, less fun buzz that comes with drinking iced beer at the proper pace, it was somewhere between 5.30 and 6 p.m. It was Charla who asked the question, Hey guys, check out that odd-looking graveyard over there. Wanna go look at it? She pointed over to the east side of the park, which was bordered entirely by a huge graveyard, with those giant statues and mausoleums that are usually a legacy of the South. Being by that time suitably juiced, the group readily agreed to an expedition to that sophomoric destination. Only Bailey probably had a suitable reason for going, needing to secretly replenish his finger supply. The group good-naturedly got to their feet and trudged across the open field of the park, and to the ironwork fence surrounding the graveyard. A few more feet saw the group at one of the ancillary gates to the boneyard. They entered the final resting place of the local deceased. It was immediately apparent that the recently deceased were no longer at rest. Indeed, it could be said that the deceased were not even at their ease, as the entirety of the graves in this graveyard had been dug up. 